These poets are amazing. A campfire smoke blending into a night sky, amazing. Front row, amazing. Mosh pit, amazing. Dancing with someone you actually love, amazing. I wish I had a pick. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube. I'm Joe Atticus Inch, and welcome to today's episode of Poet Love. Now, as you see, I brought Carmelita back out here for you, which means only one thing. We're going to look today at the relationship, again, between poetry and music. And in today's episode, we look at someone who's not only very polarizing in the musical scene, but between a lot of my friends, I found out. But me, personally, I still am a huge fan of Bruce Springsteen. That's today's Pope, Bruce Springsteen. Kind of spoiled that, but oh well. Now to get the Wikipedia history out. Bruce Springsteen was born in New Jersey. After forming the E Street Band, he released two albums to critical but not commercial success. Those two albums, of course, being Greetings from Asbury Park and The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Shuffle. It wasn't until 1975 with the release of the now classic album Born to Run that he finally found a mainstream audience and, of course, the legend was born today. Bruce Springsteen has continued to tour and release albums, most recently last year's album Wrecking Ball, which is brilliant in my opinion. Now, personally, like I said, I am a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. Um, some of my first interactions when I used to drive down, when me and my mom used to drive down to from our small town in Michigan to Columbus, Ohio, where we live now, we had just a tape player, but my mom had a collection of tapes. And there were basically about three, ta four tapes I would listen to, make her listen to over and over again. Those, uh, those tapes were We Are the World, Don't Judge, Prince's Purple Rain, the original Blues Brothers soundtrack, and Born in the USA. Since then, anything Bruce Springsteen I try to get my hands on. I own Bruce Springsteen now on tape, vinyl, and CD. And he's just had, he's just always had the stories that I can relate to. Bruce Springsteen, I feel, does speak for a working class. And despite being the rock star that he is, Bruce Springsteen has never really came off as a rock star. He still does, he still has that air air of working class man, still tells stories working class, still fights for the working class. He's been, of course, been involved with many political campaigns, most being some of the biggest faces of political campaigns within recent years. Most of his albums have always had such a political, such as Born in the USA, of course, with its commentaries during the Vietnam, about the Vietnam War, and also the whole scrimmage between Ronald Reagan, when Reagan wanted to use it as his campaign fund, not really catching the message of the original song. His 2008 album, Working on Dream, which was, of course, heavily heavily endorsed by the Obama campaign. The Rising, which came after the two, the September 11th attacks, talking about the wreckage of the city and the aim to rebuild. And yeah, I just love Bruce Springsteen, but I get why people don't. Now, when people don't like Bruce Springsteen, there's a few reasons that I can understand. A lot of his songs are about what many people call, in one word, America. Spelled like that. And some other people have said, well, you know, he just writes the same song. You did the same, his songs are A, B, C, D, and E. And I get that too, but Bruce Springsteen, like with many artists that I truly admire, shows his influences. And his influences are early rock and roll, which weren't really that progressive. And also, think about it. For he's been around, it's been nearly 40 years now. Bruce Springsteen has still been touring. He still looks 
like he's always had. He still writes the songs. He still believes what he in what he writes, and that's very admirable to me. Plus, I mean, the way he interacts with the E Street Band and just anyone he works with. I mean, his influence has shown greatly throughout the decades. I mean, without Bruce Springsteen, would we have bands like one of my favorite new bands, the Gaslight Anthem? I mean, he's worked with everybody. Bob Dylan, uh, he's played with the Gaslight Anthem, Dropkick Murphys, Warren Zavon, who uh, we'll get to here someday. If you don't know Warren Zavon, like I said, we'll get to it someday, but check it out beforehand. And, I mean, it's it's simple rock and roll. Is there anything wrong with that, really? My opinion, no. It keeps us into our roots. And, you know, it's just Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen, like I said, he keeps that air of working class. He does. He's white shirt and blue jeans. He always knows where he came from. And he always doesn't give up who he is, which is something very admirable to me, as I keep saying. And, you know, you, you can't beat the classics. I mean, Born to Run, Born in the USA, Darkness at the Edge of Town. I mean, his albums are just so great. He is, he's not a singles artist to me, personally. The singles he releases from the album, they're great. But he's best when he has a whole album of just great material and on that note to get more critical in my stance here are my top five favorite Bruce Springsteen albums number five The Rising written after the September 11th attacks it was his first album in years with the E Street Band also it started off his creative peak after the 90s and started to continue throughout the decade while this album may not be perfect it still has a lot of great songs and captures the mood of the time. Number four, Born in the USA, a classic Springsteen album. Though I must admit I've kind of grown out of the 80s technologies that were used in this, but still there's nothing beating the title track, Dancing in the Dark, and so on and so forth. Number three, Magic. My favorite album of the 2000 Springsteens. The energy of this album from the singles such as Radio Nowhere and Girls in Their Summer Clothes mixed in with album tracks such as Living in the Future, Long Walk Home. I think it's just his best so far of the 2000 to 2010 generation. Number two, Greeting from Asbury Park, his debut album. And again, while it not, not be perfect, it holds up highly for me to having one of my favorite Springsteen songs, Spirit in the Night. And number one for me, it's a no-brainer. Number one is, of course, Born to Run, the album that showed America who Bruce Springsteen was. And going from the title track, Jungle Land, 10th Avenue Freeze Out. I can listen to this album over and over again. It's the reason people start paying attention to Bruce Springsteen. It's the reason people start falling in love with Bruce Springsteen. And in my opinion, still his best album. And I mean, that's all I basically have to say. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, lasagna. And that's all I basically have to say about it. Bruce Springsteen still making music, still influencing people like me, and hold on one second. And again, it's kind of hard to think about Bruce Springsteen as a poet. He's a great songwriter, but his songwriting comes more from the stories he tells than just from the lyrical prose does not mean he has not had a influence on poetry. Case in point, this book here, Love Poems and Other Messages for Bruce Springsteen. It is a book that I found in a free book bin at a coffee shop where I went to see one of my friends perform. And it's a very interesting book connecting showing how different poets connect to Bruce Springsteen, what their music means to him, 
So clearly he's had great influence. And like I said earlier, I mean, bands like the Gaslight Anthem and most of the like new, new era, how do I put this? Uh, new era retro rock comes through. You see a lot of Bruce Springsteen references and when most bands get this thing. I mean, think about when the Killers released Sam's Town. The first thing most critics says they were trying to sound like Springsteen. That big, bombastic American rock. And you know what? I like Sam's Town. I'm not saying that everything Bruce has done is great. Everything that he's influenced is great. But I still love Bruce. I love Bruce Springsteen. I love my boss. And on that note, we're going to pull up the magic shoe box here. We're going to draw next week's poet and it's going to be another beautiful woman in our poetry community. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joe Atticus Inch reminding you to keep your pens moving, live long and prosper. I'll see you next week.